Let me read to you a passage from the 10th chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 24 to 33. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said to the twelve, A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. That's from Matthew chapter 10 verses 24 to 33. What does it suggest to us? Well, it has been said that usually the reason why a dog barks is that it is nervous. One of the most obvious reactions throughout the animal and sentient kingdom is fear. On the one hand there is aggression and on the other hand there is fear. The smallest insect flees for its life at the approach of any perceived threat and so does the largest animal. Fear is an inbuilt instinct that protects the animal, powering its strength as it outruns the predator that is in hot pursuit. Fear is everywhere. But now Observe how, in our Gospel passage today, our Lord says, Do not be afraid. He says this time and again during his public ministry. When his disciples are caught in the midst of the storm at sea, he comes to them across the water. They think they are seeing a phantom and cry out in fear. Our Lord's first words are, Do not be afraid. It is I. Did our Lord himself experience fear? Undoubtedly so, not only because he shared our humanity fully with the exception of sin, but the Gospel shows he instinctively feared, for instance, his coming passion. In the Garden of Gethsemane he sweated drops of blood, appealing to his Father that his cup of suffering be taken away from him. In his humanity he instinctively feared danger and threats but he was in no way subject to that fear. He mastered his instinctive fear, and one of the notable features of the accounts of the Passion, especially in the Gospel of St. John, is the sovereign calmness with which our Lord takes his path to Calvary and to his death. He was never deflected by fear. Here we have a man who knew exactly what was coming to him in all its brutal detail, and this foreknowledge is shown at various times in the Gospel, but who intrepidly proceeded along the path willed by his Father. As the hour drew near and ever nearer, we see in him courage, an absence of all bitterness at the vindictiveness of men. It is in this sense that Christ was fearless. He was fearless in that no threat was allowed to turn him from the fulfilment of his Father's will. In our Gospel passage that I read earlier, our Lord repeats three times his direction to his disciples not to be afraid. Do not be afraid of them, he says. And again, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. And again a third time, do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. He also tells them why they are not to be afraid. To begin with, he himself the master was treated in the worst possible way. They even called him a devil, Beelzebub. If, for following Christ, 
and his way, you are vilified in similar manner, do not be afraid. It is to be expected since they did this to the master. Love and follow the master then. And there is a second reason for not fearing. Whatever evils come upon you in this life cannot compare to the joy of the next. The only real thing to fear is displeasing God, God himself. So then, be afraid rather of turning away from the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Put the highest store on the judgment of God. And a third reason for not fearing is the thought that God loves you. He takes account of the smallest sparrow that falls to the ground and dies. How much more will he care for you in the way he knows to be best? So do not be afraid. Let us keep to Christ and his way and to the mission of bearing witness to him for this work will bring the highest rewards whatever be the rejection you endure as its result. Whoever acknowledges me before men, our Lord says, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. And let us remember that fear can debilitate a person from the following of Christ, and this fear can be present in various ways. A person has wealth and he constantly remembers that Christ commanded love and service of the poor, the giving of alms, but he cannot bring himself to part with his money. He fears the perceived insecurity and cannot take the step of giving alms. And when he does, he gives only what he does not need. He needs to be liberated from his fear if he is to follow Christ closely. And there are many other fears. You know, in 1531, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Mexico appeared on several occasions to Juan Diego, who is now canonized. During her fourth apparition to him, this is what she said, and I quote from the sources. Hear me and understand well, my son, that nothing should frighten or grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear that sickness, nor any other sickness or anguish, may happen. Am I not here, I who am your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your health? Are you not happily within my fold? What else do you wish? Do not grieve nor be disturbed by anything. Let us always trust God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us trust Mary, our Heavenly Mother, given to us to be our Mother on the cross, by Christ on the cross. Let us trust all our Heavenly Friends, the angels and the saints. Let not fear deflect us from doing God's will.